Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk and today I'm going to tell you about making latex items and how I made my rubber alien suit, which isn't finished. What is latex and where does it come from? Well, latex comes out of a rubber tree, typically in Malaysia, and it's then imported to the UK or another country where the manufacturer cuts it typically with ammonia. I've got some latex here, if we have a quick smell of it, it's quite smelly. And that's because latex is air drying, so it doesn't have a catalyst to set like silicon rubber. So basically it's cut with ammonia so that it dries quicker than it would if it was just full of water. Standard moulding latex you can buy in the UK contains typically 60.5% rubber solids. That means just over 60% is actually rubber from a rubber tree and the rest is ammonia or water that it's cut with which evaporates as it dries. As a result of this it shrinks slightly as it dries. Also latex comes out of a tree remember, so you'll find it dries a yellowy brown normally even though it's white to start with. You can get latex pigments to colour the latex including white pigments, there's a range of normally 7 colours. If you want to make the item in white rubber then you must use white pigment otherwise you'll find it dries a yellowy brown. I've also got some latex thickener here, which makes the liquid thicker. This makes it less runny so you can paint it onto non-porous items to make a mould. If you buy latex thickener and it's very thick and gloopy, this liquid's very very thin, you should have a sniff of it because you'll probably find it's wallpaper paste. This is genuine latex thickener which is a very thin liquid but when you mix it with latex it will become like cream cheese. You'll find this liquid's quite runny, which is good for casting with. If you want to make a mould, that's what latex thickener is for. So how do you make pieces out of latex? Well latex will stick to fabric and it will stick to foam, so you could build the piece up from scratch in that fashion. But for the alien suit I wanted to make sculpts to make moulds to cast the latex pieces in. Here's a piece of the alien suit, it's a piece of the breast bone that goes just there. And it's made completely out of latex, it's also got some wire in the middle to keep it rigid. Latex is air drying, so if you want to cast it into a mould, the best thing to use is a plaster mould, which I've got just here in the piece. And that's because plaster is porous, so it will draw the moisture out of the latex, and that will help the latex to dry in the mould. I use black pigmented latex to make this piece, as you can see, and here's some photos of the progress. First of all, I made the clay sculpt on the board, and I used a piece of conduit for the middle. The board was made of polystyrene and covered in gaffer tape. That's because the plaster doesn't stick very well to that. Once I made the sculpt, I covered it with plaster, which was reinforced with mod rock. I used Herculite 2 plaster for this. And then that gave me a plaster mould which we could dwell latex in. And this process is quite important. The best thing to do with a plaster mould is to fill the mould completely with latex and leave it for several hours and you'll find that the plaster absorbs the latex in the surface and that forms a skin on the inside of the mould. After about two hours you can pour out the excess and that will give you a piece of latex that you can peel out from the inside of the mould and that's typically how masks and other latex pieces are made. In this case I actually filled the back of it in with some wire whilst it was in the mould and then completely topped the mould up with latex. I've also stuck some velcro and some fabric onto the back and covered that with latex to seal the piece all into one. Because latex sticks to fabric quite well it also sticks to velcro so I've got these two velcro straps on the back which are actually embedded into the latex and that allows me to attach it to the alien suit. Here are some more pictures of a mask in progress. In this case clay was used to make a mask over a plastic head. Here are the sculpt pictures. And then a plaster mould was made all over that. That was reinforced with some cotton scrim to make the plaster stronger. And then the clay was removed. That leaves a negative of the clay sculpt, which we can cast from in latex. Typically you'd want to fill the mould completely with latex and leave it to dwell for a few hours. But in this case the mould was quite large, so it would have needed probably 10 litres of latex. So for that reason we put a small amount of latex in and swished it all around inside, keeping the surface wet for several hours, then poured out the excess, then after leaving it to dry for probably 24 hours or leaving it overnight in a warm environment, you can peel out the mask. Here's an attractive picture of me modelling the mask in the kitchen. If you want to make an item like a full overhead mask, 
an item that's got basically a back and a front or two sides to it instead of one single side, then you'll need to make a sculpt that's exactly the same shape that you want and then put a dividing wall in so that you can make a two-piece plaster mould. In this case we sculpted all over a head with clay and then we used a water-based clay to make a dividing wall as you can see. First of all one side of the plaster mould was applied and when that was done the clay was removed and then the other side was done. Now plaster will stick to itself so it's very important that you use a release agent between the two plaster halves. We use Vaseline or you can use another petroleum jelly which works very well. Once the two halves of the mould were made they could be pulled apart fairly easily and the clay removed. We then put the two halves back together strapped them together and also sealed up the seam line with a little bit more plaster which we just did with one finger and that gave us a mould that was the shape of the whole head and that we could then dwell the latex into to make the finished piece. In this case we used blue pigmented latex as you can see. As you can see the rest of the alien suit is quite a lot bigger so this needed much bigger plaster moulds. Basically the entire thing was made flat we grab these and stretch them upwards and the rib cage also opens up and that is made in giant flat plaster moulds. Here are some pictures. First of all a giant skull was planned on a giant board. The board was about one and a half metres by 1.2 metres. A big template was drawn out on the board which had come from a paper template that I'd wrapped round a person. Then the pieces were sculpted on. Most of this was clay, but some of it was foam, and I also used curtain rings for some of the pieces, especially the piping over the shoulders. Once the clay sculpt was built up, we sealed it with some latex, and then poured plaster all over it. I think we used about 30 kilograms of plaster for this, and it was also reinforced with modrock to make it stronger. Here's the finished mould in the kitchen. It's basically against three kitchen cupboards, so you can see the size of it. Then latex was dwelled in the mould, but the mould was quite big, so mostly it was brushed in to make sure it covered all the surfaces, and then it was dwelled in some places where it needed to be. We also used some fabric in layers with the latex. This will prevent shrinkage and also makes it quite a bit stronger. Once all the surface of the mould was covered with latex, we filled it with black soft toy stuffing and some other bits of foam, and we also put some aluminium wire in there so that the piece will be able to hold its shape. The top of the mould was sealed up with black poly cotton, which was painted with more black pigmented latex, so this encloses the whole piece. Here's a picture of it removed from the mould. It's quite a bit of a mess and needed some clean up and trimming. Here are some good pictures of the finished piece once the ribs were cut out. Obviously the aluminium wire in there means we can bend it back around the person to make the costume. And that's how you make items out of latex. I've also got Alien's head here, which is actually made from fiberglass. You can look at the progress of that on my website, xrobots.co.uk. But this isn't the finished item because it's far too heavy to wear. It weighs around 4 kilograms. So I'll be making another video about the progress on that and what I plan to do with it in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.